Now we get to talk about product lifecycle. Well, this is going to be the overview on how we're going to go forward and move our product through the market taking advantage of certain stages that our product goes through to maximize our ROI, to maximize the traffic, and convert as many people as possible. So we're going to go over an overview of the four stages and everything that involved in the marketing mix. And then in the next coming videos, we're going to actually go over the shoulder and show you what to do in each one of these stages. So the product life cycle, if you don't know what that is, is basically all products, and this is kind of a universal truth of business, go through four stages of a life cycle. If you know and understand each one of these stages, you can actually use them to your advantage. And if you don't know anything about these, you're leaving money on the table because you're not taking advantage of certain opportunities. So there's four stages, introduction, growth, maturity, and decline. And as I go through this, you might have some light bulbs that go off in your head. And that's going to be basically telling you that this has been there and you kind of saw the signs, but now we're putting this into practice. We're making rules around it and we're going to implement strategies that take advantage of each one of these. So within each four stages of the four stages, we have what we call the marketing mix. And the marketing mix is basically made up of product pricing, distribution, and promotion. Your actions through each one of the stages with the marketing mix are what's going to change between those stages. So the introduction stage, let's go through the marketing mix for this. It's a brand new product. You have a new angle on an old product. So if you have some product that you found on eBay that's old, then you can take a new angle on it, right? We're always trying to be unique. But if you have a t-shirt that's brand new, that's also the same part of this process, right? Your design is new. You're introducing it to the market for the first time or your repositioning of an old product. The pricing is something that you need to establish in this stage. And this stage could be very short, um, or it could be you know a week or so of testing. So you're gonna establish a rate through split testing if needed. Good to aim high within reason, right? We're gonna market rate, we're gonna set kind of a market rate through looking on Amazon, looking at eBay, looking at the other products, and see what we can sell for. T-shirts are very well established with this, right? You're gonna be selling anywhere from $19.95 to $24.95 right for a t-shirt and yes there are exceptions to the rule but we're talking about the rule not the exceptions so we're going to work to find our good conversion rate here so and and i'll explain the math that you really need to look at um, when you're doing this in the next slide distribution here is going to be small market testing right so if you have a fan page it's perfect Post it to your fan page. We'll go over this in the coming videos, but it's simple. Would you wear this? Simple, would you want one of these? Comment, yes. That's going to be the initial gist of what we're doing here. We're market testing. No corporation ever puts a product out on the streets before it's been market tested. No one is going to spend lots of money on something or time, time is money, before it's market tested. And you need to adopt the exact same strategy. So fan pages, previous buyers, small budget tests, all of which will be covered in the coming videos. Promotions, again, PPE ads with and without links. We'll talk more. Introduction stage, conversion rate optimization. So this is a scenario that we'll take into account here. So if we have a cost of the product is $11, right? If it's a t-shirt. If I have a 5% conversion rate on 10,000 people at $24.95, my revenue here will be 12,475 minus the product cost is 6,975 in gross profit before the ad cost or any other costs are taken into association, right? But if I drop the price to 2295, I might be able to boost my conversion rate to 7% on the same amount of traffic. I'd get $16,065 in revenue then my, my costs are going to go up a little bit, right? So minus 7,700 in product cost, but that gives me 8,365 in gross profit before ad cost or any other cost. But there's another side to this and I want to cover that too. You have to run the numbers. This is why the introduction stage, you really need to take your time before really hitting the market too hard. And we'll understand where when you get to this stage, 
And a lot of people try to get it into the market before competition comes. We'll come to tell you why competition is not going to threaten you if you follow this model. So at this point, we're testing the pricing. Not a lot of people are going to see your product at this point. So split testing your price is not going to be that big of a deal. But if we aim high, we can avoid situations like this. So in that same scenario from the slide prior, if I sold it at $19.95, so I went to $24.95 to $19.95, and my conversion rate only got 7%, you would be losing money compared to the other two scenarios. So that would give me $13,965 in revenue minus $7,700 in product cost which is $6,265 in gross profit before ad cost. Uh, compared to the other ones, I'm losing money, right? So that's why you want to start high and tear down. In something like t-shirts, we're going after established rates here. If you're on your own product, if you're selling something for $9.95, try $8.95, $7.95. Knock a dollar off. There's no real set rule to it but you will understand why reducing your price to find that optimal conversion rate makes sense. So the growth strategy, this is the scale stage, basically. This is going to be maintaining of your brand new or new angle product, right? You're not gonna change any text up. We're gonna keep that positioning because when you're new and hot in the market, you can take advantage of that even more so in the growth stage. Pricing is going to be locked in through the testing and the introduction stage. Distribution, we're gonna add ads to scale. We're not gonna kill those initial guys, especially if you're making money off those PPE ads. But maximize on the market's growing acceptance of your product. Words out there, people are tagging their friends for the first time, you know, they're getting shares. All that virality is really you know, spiking your sales. You know, website conversions are hot. Uh, you're really optimizing that, you know, at a very low rate and compared to your costs. Uh, this is the time where we all have been there where you're growing. And that's what you want to do. You want to switch over to some click to website or website conversion ads. You might have a PPE ad in the introduction stage that's getting you some fires. You might be able to get that thing up to 25 to 50 sales before you actually even hit this stage. If not, you're going to be building your way there. And if you use Trackify, we could be leveraging the master pixel at this point to build up that checkout pixel. And then at a later point, we could create new ads optimizing on the checkout pixel at a broader and broader sense. Basically, what we're going to do is start narrow again and then work our way out. This is like a scale. You know, one side of it, you have uh, your targeting. The other side, you have your pixel. As more fires you get on that pixel, the broader and broader you can go on your targeting. But if you don't have any fires on your pixel, you need to start as precise as possible. It's gonna be all weighted towards the targeting. So you have to give one or the other. If you find a good balance, that's where you can really grow at a very fast rate. So the maturity stage. This is where you're gonna start seeing your ripoffs, your copycats, People coming in and trying to be your competition, basically. Differentiate your product from the competition and the copiers. X number of sold. Social proof. Show pictures and testimonials. Differentiate you from the competition. And by the way, if you are more of a legitimate company, if you have a much more um, accepted store, if you're much more trustworthy, it will be easier for you to be the guy that they go to for the sale if they're getting hit by both you and the competition. By the way, if you're doing the growth stage properly, your ad is going to be everywhere, right? We're going to be growing and distributing out. But we also want to take into account that you might not be at the point of being able to hit everybody. So we are going to do some steps here to really grow the reach. Pricing. At this point, if your conversion rate is ticking down, consider a price drop. I'm going to show you a screenshot when we get into this stage of a product that I've been selling for over 45 days. It's probably almost two months now. And I actually sold it at $9.95 for very long. And then the conversion rate was slowing. So what I did was drop the price to $7.95. Conversion rate went up and so did my revenue. And then 
the exact same thing happened again. The conversion rate slowed. I dropped it to 695. Guess what happened? Boom. Still selling more and more. And I did the math. Of course, I took into account all of my costs, but I'm able to bring in more revenue at a lower price. Some might ask, why didn't I do that up front? Well, you actually have to consider the numbers. If you can get a 10% conversion rate or a really solid conversion rate at 995, you will bring in more revenue than even if you could get you know, a little bit higher. But there's also things called early adopters and late adopters. You're gonna get a lot of traffic on the front end of people that won't buy it at 995. Then when your frequency starts to tick up, they're gonna get that ad again. They're gonna to come to the site again. That's what a lot of people don't consider, is that frequency, when that happens, when it starts spiking, it's not that they're just being served the ad again, but they are going to the site again. So if they go to the site the first time and don't buy, there's gonna be a reason. They either didn't like it, which I don't know about that because they went to the site, right? Or it was too expensive. Now we're gonna go back to the site later as they get served the ad later on, guess what, the price has dropped and now they're gonna purchase. So you're gonna take advantage of certain people throughout walking down to maximize your revenue as you're walking down through the, the stages. You're gonna maximize your revenue throughout those stages. So distribution, again, add social proof with the customers and testimonials. Promotion, video ads are huge here and this actually might knock you back into the growth stage. I have a video that you'll see in the stage that's done over $30,000 in revenue for me and it was introdu introduced in the maturity stage. The product overall has done about $50,000 in revenue. So I was in the maturity stage of the ads, but then I was able to knock the product back into growth stage with a video ad during the maturity stage. The reason for that and the reason I can introduce it here is A, I had the product shipped to me and then B, I had a massive amount of fires on my pixels and I was able to capitalize on that. But you can only do that when you're in a certain point. Or, I mean, if you have a store that is well established and those pixels are already established, right? But if we're starting from square one, we won't be able to do an effective video ad until we're in the maturity stage and we have lots of fires. Important to note, the maturity stage, if done correctly, will have roughly 10 to 15% less sales than your growth stage. Why do I tell you that? Well, you're getting competition brought in to the market at this point, right? But a lot of people freak out when competition comes in. By no means is your product threatened when competition is introduced. If you have 10 to 15% of less uh, in of sales in the maturity stage, then you do the growth stage, then you understand that that is a lot of your sales. A lot. It's actually about 33% of your sales happen in the mature, in maturity stage. That is huge. And you have to capitalize on it, taking the right steps. Decline stage. This is where you're going to want to either improve on your product or add features or products in conjunction, right? Two for one or something about your product has to change in order to really spike the sales. You could also consider another price drop. You're aiming to liquidate, right? If you have inventory or you're aiming to maximize your profit as the sales decline, your frequency is now going to be a lot higher than any other point. You and the competition have slammed the market with this product. So it's dying in the lead position, right? It's not dying as a product. It's dying in the leads position. Anybody that's going to buy out of the impulse category has seen this. You're going to have a lot of people that are going to be the real late adopters to the market that will buy this in the store. So you move it to your product catalog or you move it to the follow-up sequence, right? You switch to another product and then their first follow-up is hey, I thought you'd you know, you know I thought you'd like this item because you liked this item, right? And Rare is going to help us do that too. So if you move to the next item, this one goes into the store, and late adopters will get this product. Still, it's already a proven product that hasn't changed. 
We're just going to take advantage of it in a different setting outside the lead item. Cut back ads as sales slow, right? You're gonna to have to really monitor day by day as the products are changing as ter in terms of um, sales, right? If you have multiple lead items, you need to really look at the sales and the decline stage to make sure you're turning off ads as they go bad. Aim to stop all ads as a new product is being brought into the lead item, right? We never want to stop, you know, stop selling. We want to have one product go up as the other one is coming down. So one product, if you go back to the original graph here, one product is going up as the other one is coming down. And that will keep a constant flow of revenue coming into your company. Now this applies to the lead item. I want to say that one more time. This applies to the lead item. If there, if you have stores, um, if you have ads going to your store in generality, it's going to be a little bit different. But what we're doing is making sure that we're maximizing the traffic that we're pushing to the main item or items. Maximizing that traffic as it comes back to our site, because it retargeting is one thing, right? But you will have people hit with the same ad over and over again. So we want to make sure that we're taking care of those people and making it easier for them to purchase down the line. We also want to knock out the competition through adjusting our product, adjusting our price, adding social proof, adding value, making sure that they understand that we're the product to go to because our site is trustworthy. We have all the social proof. Our ads have tons of comments and people saying how I love the product on it and the competition can just kind of go away, right? We're not afraid of competition. We went to a market with competition knowing that we could take a movements like this to maximize our traffic and not be afraid. Competition is a good thing. Okay. So let's go into each one of the stages. Let's talk about the ads. Let's talk about the targeting. Let's get in real detail of how to maximize your traffic. Okay. Take care.